hello and welcome to It's Not Over with Dr. Dan Farrell. I am Jordan and we have a guest, Brother Josh, with us today. Josh, how are you? I'm doing great. Great. And Dr. Farrell, how are you? He is not as attractive as Hannah, but oh well. <laughs> I am just, a sorry replacement. <laughs> just as smart. We're talking about a wall... Uh, give us a wall of revival. And yesterday we began with Ezra, Josh, uh, Ezra 9, verse 8 and 9. This is the story when Ezra came back and uh, to rebuild the temple because they had been in Babylon for many, many decades. And Ezra led the second group, and they arrived in about the month of July, what we call July. The city was in shambles, very little food, shortage of uh, supplies. The worst of all, the godly people had integrated uh, with the pagan culture. And this is horrible. So as the priest or the, the preacher goes, uh, so goes the people. And they were intermarrying, and their children couldn't even speak Hebrew. The Levites were gone, then pure religion is gone. If pure religion is gone, then pure then Israel is gone. See? Now we have the same thing in America. Hmm. Uh, basically us preachers, I, and I again, I never want to talk about uh, the ministerial leadership as though I'm divorced from it. You know, I realize I'm part of the problem. Mm -hmm. and But I'm also wanting to be part of the solution. Right, which is a huge step closer to it yeah. than most <laughs> and when you got a, you know, when you got a junior achiever like me trying to do what's right, what do I look like? Uh, nutcase. I look like a nutcase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, in fact, you know, had some pastor here in Cincinnati that thinks I'm a nutcase because I'm out in the streets and witnessing, passing out tracts and preaching that Christ is the only way to heaven. And so they think I'm a nutcase, How right? How dare you? Please? How dare you do such a thing? Right. Right. I mean, um, you know, sometimes people even refer to us as hyper-Calvinist mm -hmm. because we do believe in the sovereignty of God. We do believe the Holy Spirit has to do the work, but we're out there preaching and trying to win souls, and they're having rock concerts. Now, who's the hyper Calvinist? Right. I mean, I just don't get it. Right. Churches don't even have soul winning. Churches don't even go door knocking anymore because uh, we don't want confrontational evangelism. Well, I, I'm sorry. I don't. How can you win a precious soul to Christ unless you confront them with the need? Mm. Well, you you just got to love them into a relationship with Is Christ. That it? Yeah, you got to love. Give them. them a water bottle. Yeah. Uh -huh. Exactly, and then you know, in through your lifestyle evangelism, they'll see just how great a relationship for, with Jesus is, and then they'll decide that they want to become a Christian. I guess so. That's how it works. So it just it's lifestyle evangelism, right? I guess. So well, then that means Mormons ought to be really good at that because they have a pretty good lifestyle. That's true. Some Jehovah Witnesses have a, a pretty clean moral lifestyle. Yep. Why, you know, even some of your Hindus, you know, are sweet mm -hmm. neighbors and nice people. Yeah. That's that's exactly why a lot of these seeker sensitive churches don't take a stand on doctrine. Yeah. You know, because well if we have doctrine then now all of a sudden, you know, we can't be inclusive and and we can't win win all these people to Christ. Yeah. In quotations. I whenever you say that we believe in confrontational evangelism, that sounds like we don't believe in I of course I believe in lifestyle right. evangelism. You know, if you're drinking and cussing and living like the devil and then you're going to give somebody the Romans road, and you know, mm -hmm. The, the, the problem is not giving somebody the Romans road. The problem is you're not walking your talk, okay? But just lifestyle evangelism, man. That's Most not... people stop after charity. They say, well, charity and love, that's what we're supposed to have. But who says you can't have charity and love and still have doctrine and still be go out there and confront people with the gospel in, in a loving manner? I don't know. I, I mean, I, you don't I, have to I... scream down their throat and shake their heads and say, you trust Christ. I mean, you... Go with love, right. but teach the truth in love. Yeah, this is um, it's it's a shame we have to even talk about this stuff as if Christians have forgotten this. I mean, mm -hmm. can you imagine having this discussion? Of course, you guys are young. We would have never had this discussion thirty years ago, right? I mean, because people got it, uh -huh. but people today are they're clueless. You know, all right, Jude, verse uh, what did I say? Verse twenty to twenty three. Mm -hmm. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying. And the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some having compassion, making a difference, and others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. All right, so when the salt is gone or compromised, society is at a great risk because salt is, provides the preserving effect. You see, when the lights go out, the darkness takes over. And so part of the problem is, a bit, the big part of the problem is Christianity 
even good Christianity has compromised because we don't want to appear out of step with the world and we want to try to win the world's favor and so we think you do it by compromising have a rock concert whatever uh, there's a church not east of uh since they had the bathing suit contest oh wow oh yeah it was a blessing oh, but the pastor told but they me, were godly bathing suits right he told me they're one piece oh, so okay. it's okay that was it was godly this is on a wednesday night in the auditorium wow it's amazing amazing number two godly intercession now we do have a remnant and that's what's encouraging in fact tell you the truth probably some of the remnants they're the ones listening to us on radio sermon audio youtube there is a remnant i mean let's give lot some credit he was vexed with the the filthy communication of the wicked it, it, he didn't agree with it he, he didn't take a stand but he, he didn't agree with it uh, i was talking to a fellow today we were talking about nazi germany what if the Nazis were coming down your street? Let's use you, for instance, where you live, and you see them getting their neighbors out and beating them, and you see their kids screaming and crying, bring my daddy back. What are you going to do? Are you going to jump out there and say, hey, you're not, you can't do that, because they'll take you away and leave your wife without a husband and your kids without a dad. In other words, how how bold and how much involved do you really want to be when you consider it's your family, it's your safety? Uh, are you asking me? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm glad he's asking you. All right. <laughs> how quick would we get involved if what happened to the Germans right. happened to us? Because I think it's coming. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to have to go to jail. Mm -hmm. Really. And you yep. know what I'm talking about. You almost did several yeah. <laughs> weeks ago somebody's got to go to jail mm -hmm. someone's going to get it yeah i don't know and we, we can sit that. we can sit here and talk big and brave but man when it's coming down your front door what are you going to do i don't know you got to do what's right you <laughs> just have to stand for what is right and man. realize it's you you've got to stand for something more important than your own life correct and if you can't do that, then what's the point of living? You got to find something bigger than your own life and stand for it. You know the thing that so the th I believe Christ is that. You know the thing that that encourages me. Honestly, when the day comes that Dan Farrell gets thrown in jail, what encourages me is that Josh and Jordan and Brian and uh, Charles and you guys will know about it. That's what encourages me. As long as you guys know. Because here's why: if you know, it may it's going to stir you up, mm -hmm. and then I feel like my my incar incarceration is worth something. I'm sitting here in a stinking jail. I can't. I have no fellowship. No, I'm not getting any letters. But at least I feel like my life counts for something because you guys know. See, that's why there are people out in Wyoming and Idaho and Oregon. They don't have any church family. They don't have any tight knit fellowship with Christians of like faith. You know. Uh, the only church they have is a stupid church, and all they do is have rock concerts. You know, it's a joke. They don't teach doctrine. You got Christians. I, there's a guy writing me from Idaho. He cannot find a church. Wow. He can't find a church. I'm not going to say what city he lives in. It's ridiculous. Tommy out there in Medford, Oregon, mm -hmm. he has a lady coming from Grants Pass. She can't believe that he started a church there. She goes, I, th I, thought, you, I thought it was done. Wow. She couldn't believe, couldn't find a church like his. I don't know. I I think that did I tell the story? Was it last week I told the story about the, that church that they were located near Drakow, which was a concentration camp? Did I tell that story? Sure. And how the train was coming yeah. with Jews? Yeah, it was maybe last week or a week before. And the, and the church could hear the screams and the moans and groans mm -hmm. of the Jews in the boxcars. Mm. And so what they did it it haunted them and bothered them so bad that they sang hymns louder. To drown out the crying, hmm. and then years after the war was over, they were many of the members were haunted because they knew they didn't do the right thing. They didn't stand. Can you believe that? That actually, that's, that's in the our college is offering a a course called the Revival of the Third Reich, and this textbook brings that out, man. I think that's where we're at. I think I think I think pastors. 
And remember Francis Schaeffer said that all that matters is personal peace right. and yeah. personal affluence. Right. The, the two values of a decadent society. Correct. Everything hangs on those two values. Right. And so churches and Christians and pastors would rather lock their door and eat their pizza yep. and pull, pull the shades down mm -hmm. and let the world go to hell. And their Christians, their fellow Christians suffer. They'd rather that. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it is. It's exactly what it is. Yeah. There, there's that famous, um, I don't know what it's, it's, a, it's a, like a little essay. They came for the Jews, but I wasn't a Jew. Right. And then they came for the gypsies, but I wasn't a gypsy. Mm -hmm. And no one protested. And then they came for me and there was no one left mm -hmm. to, to protect me, you know. Yep. America's going that way, man. And you know what I think? I, you, what do you think? You think guys that advise Mr. Obama, and I, you, we know he's not a history student. I don't know if he studies anything, but, you know the end of a cigarette but <laughs> maybe marxism i think he might have studied marxism maybe he does quite a bit. marxism but my point is is you think the guys that give him advice you don't think they've studied the historical right. model of how this thing right. goes they know christians will cower they know most christians won't fight see england thought the same thing england thought well those bunch of country bumpkins they won't fight for liberty mm -hmm. but they were wrong about patrick henry they were and sam adams and john adams and george washington they were wrong about those guys it was interesting i was reading an article earlier today and there was a comment in it talking about how the new fascism is now it's going to be the fascism that's against fascism and so it basically mm. calls everything but itself fascism mm. Mm. and all in in the name of fascism of course it's the mm. new tolerance you know that sort of thing yeah yeah the new tolerance mm. i hate it man mm -hmm. so what i like is ezra did not hide his emotions he wept and cried when he saw how bad things were he didn't um, just try to keep his composure he wasn't pc he wept he trembled at god's word he didn't try to cover up he didn't try to pretend that things weren't that bad and guess what happened when ezra knelt publicly to pray and broke up i mean he was upset the people joined him and there was this revival of brokenness and contriteness and 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 weeping and crying and begging god for forgiveness because one man got involved one man took a stand and interceded for god and believed that the only hope for this dismal situation is that the sovereign god will break our hearts that's right it was so bad and i think that's where we're at i mean if you want to elect donald trump for president go ahead right. but donald trump's not going to fix america no and and neither is ted cruz mm. only god can fix this country and why should he when the christians won't pray for revival it's amazing. All right, we'll we'll pick up next week or uh, tomorrow. Thank you so much for tuning in to our program here on It's Not Over with Dr. Dan Fair. I'd like to encourage you to please visit our umbrella website, which is morningstarnetwork.org. And uh, if you have not visited that, it's quite a site. Not necessarily something as spectacular to look at, but as far as what's on there, uh, the different ministries that are represented there, like Delta Force, which is our street evangelism program, Lakota Christian School, which uh, is a, a school local here in the northern Cincinnati uh, area, which, um, man, it's from K-4 all the way to 12th grade and has a great education and also a Christian education, which is very important. And, and then there's uh, many other things to check out there. There's the Fourth Watch, which is our um, sermons on Sunday morning. There's also sermonaudio.com slash it's not over. And now we recently, I'm not sure if it's uh, been updated to our website, but we have a YouTube channel and also a Facebook page. So a YouTube channel, it's not over. And then a Facebook page, also it's not over. I'd like you, for you to please check those out. And if you're interested in possibly giving of a financial donation to us, we would highly appreciate that. And you can do that at morningstarnetwork.org, top left-hand corner of the page. Click on that and PayPal will make itself visible. Here's Dr. Farrell to close. Thank you, Jordan. Listen, Ezra got personally involved. He said in verse 6, Oh my God, I'm ashamed and blush to lift up my face to thee, my God. For our iniquities are increased over our head, and our trespasses has grown up unto the heavens. I pray that God will give people like you and I a broken heart like this, that we'll weep for America and weep for our churches, that maybe God in his sovereign mercy would give us revival.